Hi guys, and uh, I decided to do a little video today on the change that I made in my shock recently, which was um, swapping out the Flex 6400M with uh, a nice hand fellow, great guy, and for CBS. And uh, I swapped my 6400M for his FTDX101D. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that you're gonna notice if you should make a similar change. Uh, and the Flex 6400M is, uh, when I first got it, it was just the most amazing receiver that I've ever used. It was my first SDR. And, um, it served me very well for three years, and uh, it really was my pride and joy, and <clears throat> I really <clears throat> appreciated it, and, and uh, really loved everything it could do, and um, it has a lot of advantages to have the Flex, and the biggest one in my mind is the remote operation, um, so much so that I, I don't have my phone on me, but the, uh, the phone, uh, that I picked up, I picked up to make sure it was the right size so that I could remote in with the flex. But I never got around to it, to uh, remoting in with the flex. Uh, There's just nowhere that I went that I had enough time to do it and so forth. It just never happened. Um, so I, I thought about it and um, I put an ad and uh, asked for anybody that wanted to swap a 6400M for another high-end rig, um, and just an open-ended. You know, I didn't say this rig, that rig, I just said, um, I think I mentioned the 890 in my, in my ad, or any other high-end, just let me know what you got. And I, I got a response from N4CBS, and uh, we made the exchange, and uh, I have to tell you that um, I was very reticent about doing this. Um, the 101D, I read about it, and I read some things about it that were great, but I read some things about it that were, that it was a difficult rig to um, operate, and that the ergonomics weren't that great. Well, I can tell you that the, the ergonomics, they're right about that. The ergonomics could use a big improvement. Um, the Flex 6400 ergonomics, in my opinion, were the M, which means the Maestro was built right, on, right, right in. That radio, um, the ergonomics were, were perfect. I mean, you really couldn't. If you're going, judging a rig just on ergonomics out, in my opinion, that one beats this one by, by a country mile. Um, however, um, that said, the ergonomics piece of it. Um, I am digging into the rig. I, I've, I've run through the manual a couple of times, but I need to get the, uh, the manual. And for CBS said he was going to uh, send me the, uh, the third party manual that was put out for this rig. And that should really help a lot. Um, I do realize that there is a learning curve for this rig, and I want you all to know that. Um, you can operate it out of the box and uh, without the manual. However, you're not going to get all... You need to read the manual, and you need to learn the radio. It, it is very true. Um, some guys just get the radio, and then they can't, or they don't have time to learn it, so they they swap it out or sell out, sell out and try another one. And that's fine, but I think that you need to give it a chance and go through uh, the manual and uh, watch some YouTube videos and take your time learning. Because there, I have to tell you, there are a lot of features on this rig. And the more that I operate it, the more that I go, wow, um, this rig has so many functions to it and options that um, it really, it, it compared to the Flex, I mean, as far as the ability to move quickly from 
task to task, whether you want to change a filter, uh, adjust the change from the main VFO to the sub, which is the first or the second receiver, um, and all that, or well, the first and the second VFO, I should say, and all that, it, it's just unbelievable, and I'm still learning it. And um, I'm beginning to really love the radio, but it's taking time because it takes time to learn everything. And I will say this, um, buttons and knobs are important. Now I'm old school, I got my, my ham license in 1979. I get it, it's been all knobs and buttons for decades until very recently. But the reason why I think it's important for him is so that you can push a button without having to go into a menu. Well, we still have menus on this radio. There's still a menu to for settings in that. Um, but to to change um, filters in, in in increments, you know, not, not just variables. Like on the flex, it was all variable. You're just constantly turning, turning. But to change. Um, adjust the press of a button and get the filter that you want uh, or use APF which is fantastic for CW. I'm a CW guy and, and that APF is just awesome. Flex has APF too but it's not selectable. It, it is in the menu but this is selectable on the front. Guys it does make a difference to have buttons and knobs. Um, some people say well I can use the computer and, and you, of course you can, and I did for three years, and I used the front of the, the Maestro, which is built into the Flux 6400M, that's why they call it M. But I, I, I felt intuitively that there was something missing. And then um, a couple of months back, I had, a, <clears throat> I had a, another swap that I did. A couple of months before I swapped this, I had an IC7300. I uh, wanted to sell off, but... Um, I ended up swapping with a local hand for uh, the Yezu FT-1000 date from uh, 1989, 1989-1990, when it uh, came out. The rig's over 30 years old in terms of its uh, when it came out. And um, I began looking at that and uh, playing with it, the second receiver on the 1000D began the, the beautiful 1000D is just a classic a super hat rig and um, I really loved that rig I still have it right here as my backup but then I thought about it I'm like wouldn't it make sense to get the best of SDR um, and the best of uh, the old school knobs and buttons and so I reasoned that well why don't I when somebody offered the swap for the 101D, it immediately came to mind, well, why don't I go ahead and do the swap? And <clears throat> I'm not sorry because the, the, it is simply amazing. And at first, when you first turn it on and play with it, it's a little confusing. It's a little intimidating, you know. But um, once you start getting used to it and, and looking at the scopes and the, the filter settings, it's just... It's just unbelievable the amount of options. Now, I was also really wanted to look at the TS-890S Kenwood, as, as, I, as I was saying. The, the ICOM 7610 was in the mix too, but I heard some weird things about that on the display, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't an option. I had an ICOM 7300. I liked it, but it, it's it, what the build quality just for me, it was kind of, in the screen, I really didn't like it. And, um, it was a great rig though. It did a great job. I used it on FT8 for like a couple of years. But this, it, it's just, there's things that I still do. I'm like, how, how do I do that? And I'm like, why isn't, like today I was playing with it. I was like, why don't I have both, um, uh, both VFO frequencies on the screen? And that's because I had it in mono mode. <laughs> and you know, some of the terms that Yezu uses uh, in its um, 
you know, its buttons and knobs and controls are a little bit non-intuitive. You know, mono, you think of mono sound. You don't think of, well, mono, and if I put it on mono, I get just the, uh, the main, the main uh, VFO. Because it has two, two receivers, two VFOs, two uh, controls for, for everything. And so I'm just here to tell you that knobs and buttons, uh, it's not just a matter of being tactile, they are very functional. And on this radio, um, it's just amazing. Once you learn it, and I'm still learning it, haven't had that much time to learn it lately, I've been busy, but I'm gonna dig in and learn this. Get that manual, that third party manual, and really learn it and be able to really, really fly with it. So I just wanted to make this short video about going from something like a Flex 6400, which is one of the top receivers. This one, um, according to the Sherwood report, as everybody knows, is the top one on the receiver. That isn't why I bought it. I had a great receiver in the 6400, but it was the uh, functionality um, and the, uh, the options and, and the, the um, ability to look at a s s multiple scopes at the same time. The 6400 doesn't have that ability. It just has the waterfall. So this, you know, tuning a CW signal is extremely easy on this. And uh, filtering out the CW signal using APF, it, it just brings that CW signal to life in an amazing way. Similar to the 1000D, by the way, the 1000D has uh, has that, um, and it really works wonders, even in that old technology. So just want to let you know, don't be afraid of it. If you do uh, thinking about getting it, it, you will have to take some time to learn it a little bit, but I think at the end of the day, this is going to be worth it. And uh, maybe ergonomically not the best, you've got knobs, and buttons located in weird places, especially buttons around the VFO. I think I'm not really crazy about that. It's a little bit, a little bit awkward. I, I would prefer the the buttons like on the 890 and the 990. That would be ideal. But um, this overall is just phenomenal. So I would just say, don't be afraid. Make the swap. Make the switch. Now, I, I can't speak to the 890 or the 990 or the uh, 7610 ICOM because I've never used it. From what I've read, though, they're, they're phenomenal as well. I would say the ICOM ergonomically probably beats this. I would say all of the others ergonomically probably probably beats this in, in a sense. But the, um, the functionality and uh, the, the sheer amount of features just blows away anything that I've used before, quite honestly. There's things in here I haven't even looked at yet. So um, that's it for now. And I uh, just wanted to post this on my blog here and I'll let you all know what was going on. Um, and uh, we will hopefully get another video soon. I've got a Tentec Arbido QRP Rig 540 coming in today. Uh, once I get it set up over here, I'll do a video on that hopefully. Okay, thanks. Ciao. It's W1AL.